Shalom, 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 Israel's brother Zahaba Yala. Coming at, at you with another cold cut. I'd like to give our praise to Yahweh Hashim Yahusha. Double honest to uh, men out there on the highways and byways, pushing truth and honesty and sincerity, enduring all things for the hopefully elect. All right, pushing this ministry, building up this temple. Shalom, Shalom, the mighty uh, children out there as well, keeping the commandments, abiding their parents' households, and can't forget about the mighty Aquath holding it down, uh, 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 guiding their households. All right, guiding their households and laying down their necks, man. All right, for the Lord. All praises to Yahweh Hashim Yahusha. We're going to get into a quick cold cut going into brotherly love or fake friends, man. Right? What does it mean to um, have brotherly love and how do you identify a fake friend? <coughs> it's like a, a brother or a friend or a sister that may say they down with you, but they selling you wolf tickets. Right? Or they, you know, they say they do, you know, they this for you and they that for you, but they really not, man. You know, they're emotional. Anytime something happens to them, they switch up on you and they drop a badan. How do you identify these people? And then how do you show brotherly love? And how do you identify people that will show you that uh, sisterly or brotherly love? Right, I'm going to Syrac 6 and 7, the classic. And it says, If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him, man. So the Lord said, if you're going to get a friend, you got to prove that friend first. What does it mean to prove something? You test it. You try it out. Right? You may get that car. You prove that car. Or that car may be a lemon. You just don't buy a car and just drive it. And say, thank you. You see the car. No, you got to test drive it. You know, see what's, what may be wrong with it. You know, you test the radio, kind of asking questions. You know, that's how you prove something. You do the same thing with a friend. You ask questions. You see what they're like in all seasons, right? You see how they are when they're angry, when they don't get their way, when adversity hits them, right? When things do go their way, how are they like? Are they prideful, right? Like, you got you to gotta prove a friend and be not hasty to credit him. Meaning if you get a friend, don't be so quick to give that person credit. Don't be so quick to brag about that person. You don't know who that person is, man. Right? That person is a stranger until you prove that person first, man. So you want to prove your friends, man. Right? Let's go to Proverbs 27 and 17. Actually, Slack, we're going to read on. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. This book is fire, man. It's like fire. Because they're giving you life lessons. A friend may be his friend for her own occasion. Just so he can get what he wants. Right? That brother only messes with you because you got the new shoes in school and everybody giving you credit. Everybody like you. So that person, that he he used to hate you. He used to give you that wedgie in, 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 in damn study hall. Now he your best friend. He clicking it with you. He joking for, with you just so he can get some clout. Right? That's a new thing out here. Everybody trying to get clout, man. Everybody trying to get that fame, that five minutes of fame. And they'll do whatever and they'll hang with whatever, put on whatever just to get that little bit of fame. And that person would be with you just for that clout. All right. And it says... And will not abide in the day of thy trouble. Right. Well, hey, as soon as something go wrong, as soon as something don't go his way or something go wrong with you and you receive trouble, guess what's happening? That person gone, man. You blink that person not there no more, man. Right. That person threw up the deuces and faded away. Right. Hey, there's men and sisters out there that would do that to you, man. That's why the Lord said to prove a friend. But let's read on. It gets more specific. And there is a friend. Who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach, man. Again, some friend is a companion at the table. So some people going to eat with you. Like Judas ate with the Lord. The Lord broke bread with Judas and knew he was going to betray him, man. There's some brothers that will eat with you. They'll drink with you. They'll laugh with you. They'll act like everything cool with you. They'll you will introduce, you'll invite them over, introduce them to your kids and your wife and your family. Right? You will introduce that sister to your husband and your kids. and your, You know, they're cool with you, right? But hold on. It will not continue in the day of thy affliction. You're right. You lost the house that you invited that sister or brother over, and now you can't even you can't even call that person. That person gone. All right? That person, uh 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 here's the voicemail box of da 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 and they not answering, man. Right? And it says, But in thy prosperity he will be as thyself, and we be bold over thy servants. Right? And that prosperity and your prosperity, they'll be just like you, man. All right? They'll be They'll be they'll be just like you. You know, they'll be uh being bold over your servants. Yeah, 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 like like in lottery ticket. I brought the example, yeah, like lottery ticket, man. Kinda kinda uh, uh slapping your hand. Yeah, hey, 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 you heard what he said. You heard what he said, hey, you know that's the man right there. Yeah, I'm his man, I'm his friend right there, man. But hold on, man. Right? They're gonna be just like you, right? Being bold over your servants, but what? If thou be 
Onshlak is but in thy prosperity he will be as thyself and be bold of thy servants. If thou be brought low, he will be he will be against thee and will hide himself from uh, thy face, man. And guess what? He will hide himself from you. He not there no more. So these are you These are all the characteristics and the traits of a fake friend, of a person that's really not down with you, man. That's what the Lord started off with. Prove a friend first, all right? Let's go to Proverbs twenty-seven and seventeen. So you gotta watch certain people. You gotta watch certain people you eat at the table with. That's that's sad to say, but you gotta watch your family members, man. You gotta watch certain people that you sit at the table with. All right? It's Proverbs chapter twenty-seven and seven. 17 right Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 17 iron sharpeneth iron so as a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend so if you have a friend and you know you can trust that person you gotta sharpen this iron man y'all both gotta build each other up Right, y'all gotta build each other up in wisdom, knowledge, understanding, the fruits of the spirit, patience. You gotta sharpen his iron, he sharpens your iron. Right? You don't want to let your friend get dull in the spirit, man. What did the Lord do with Peter when he seen that demon was coming on him in Luke uh, in Luke 22, man? In 31. He prayed for his friend because he seen the spiritual demon coming. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Let me hold this. Go to Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. All right, this is the book of Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor, right? If two people, it's, it's better to labor with more or two people than one person. It's better to labor with more people than with one person, man, huh? because you have a better reward for your labor, right? For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he have not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? So it's better to have another person there with you because they're going to help you out. They're going to sharpen your iron. They're going to, hey, they're going to make sure you're on your P's and Q's, man. They're going to hold you accountable. So when you do have that friend, you got to hold that, uh, uh, sharpen that person's iron, man. Making sure that they're not decreasing in the spirit. All right, let's go to Proverbs chapter 18. All right, so like, actually, let's go back to Syrac chapter 6. Let's get into faithful friends. All right, let's go into faithful friends. So we know how to identify a person that's being fake. That doesn't, it's not really there for you. But how do, let's, let's see what it looks like when a person is there for you. All right, this is Syrac chapter 6. And verse 13. Separate thyself from thy enemies and take heed of thy friends. So the Lord is saying, hey, don't be around your enemies and beware of your friends. Right. Verse 14. A faithful friend is a strong defense. So a faithful friend is going he, he to be there to defend you. Right. He's going to be there to always be there with you, man. Right. Didn't the Lord said I would not be ashamed to uh, defend a friend as Syrac, man. Right. I believe that was in 30. Let me get that. All right, let me hold that and get this. Right. The Lord said I would not be ashamed to defend a friend. All right. Bear with me. Um, bear with me. I gotta get this priest. So it says that he would not be ashamed. Huh. All right. Hey, but the Lord said he. Hey, don't be ashamed to defend a friend, because a faithful friend's a defense at the end of the day, man. You know, and you want to have that person on your team. You want to have that type of person on your team where they're not gonna be afraid to defend you in the day of affliction, in the day of trouble, man. You know. Come. It's not what I want, but hey, it's the it's the spirit. Right? This Syrac chapter 40 and verse 23. A friend and a companion never meet amiss, but above both is a wife with her husband. Brethren and help are, are against time of trouble. 
but alms shall deliver more than them both. So the Lord said, brethren and help or guess what are for time of trouble, man. So when you have brothers, when you have friends, they will help you in the time of trouble, man. Right? They're going to be a strong, faithful defense for you, man. Right? How Jonathan was to David in the spirit, man. So let's go back to that Sirach chapter 6. All right? Sirach 6 and verse 15. Start verse 14. A faithful friend is a strong defense. And the, he, he that hath found such a one hath found a treasure. Right? The Lord said that's like a treasure, man. Imagine actually going out there and finding a treasure box. Or actually finding some rubies or some gold, man. That's, hey, that's... That's like having a faithful friend. And it says, verse 17, whoso, I mean, verse 15, nothing do of countervail a faithful friend and his excellency is unvaluable, man. So a faithful friend, his excellency is unvaluable. You can't trade that for nothing else, man. You got brothers that trade their brothers for money, that sell their brothers, right, uh, uh, for gold, right, for, uh, for, they trade their brother off for women. For other deceitful lust, man. But the Lord said that man is unvaluable, man. You can't trade him for nothing else, man. Because he's going to be there with you. He's going to be there with you to the end. Verse 16. A faithful friend is the medicine of life. And they that fear the Lord shall find him. Man. Right? And if you fear the Lord, you're going to have that faithful friend. The Lord not going to give you over somebody. Right? If you're proving them correctly. Right? And you fear in the Lord. The Lord going to give you a faithful a friend, man. A person that you can count on in the time of trouble, man. Right? And that's, and that's, and that's what we look for in this truth, man. The Lord has faithful friends. Right, the Lord had to deal with his friends this uh, um betraying him. But at the end of the day, he knew he can count on them, man. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 18. All right, Proverbs chapter 18 and 19. Let me get that real quick. Alright, this is Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 19. A brother offended. It's harder to be one than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle, man. So when you, if you offend your brother, if you do have that faithful friend, right? You have that faithful friend, but you decide to backstab him. You decide to be a talebearer. You decide to say, you know what? I'm going to talk about this person, right? I'm going to betray this person. Hey, it, he's harder to be one than a strong city. Yeah, you can probably overcome... You know, uh, um, you could probably overcome some strong cities like America or England. There's and that, and up some hard, Russia, Chicago, right? These are cities that's very strong, man. Right? You can't just come in there and do what you want. But hey, that city is going to be easier to overcome than a faithful friend, man. The Lord said, if you do that, it's like, you might as well let that person go. Right? Let me get the book of Sirach. All right, let me hold that. Let me get the book of Sirach. Chapter twenty seven, I believe. All right, let's get the book of Sirach, chapter twenty seven. Time. This is the book of Sirach, chapter twenty seven, verse sixteen. Whoso discovereth secrets loseth his credit. And shall never find a friend to his mind. So, the, uh, uh, you know, if you would like to discover secrets, the Lord's going to tell you how to lose your friends. Right? The Lord's going to tell you what to do if you don't want to have a faithful friend on your team. Right? So, if you discover a secret, a person tells you something. In Sirach 19, the Lord said, if you have a secret, let it die with you, man. You know, don't be a fool and utter all your mind about that other person. Right? But you will never find a friend according to your mind. Nobody's ever going to rock with you. Nobody's going to ever tell you something uh, secretive, man. And that's what ultimately brings a friend close to you when they uh, tell you about their personal life, man, what's really going on. But if nobody's ever going to tell you that, nobody's ever going to get that close to you, man. Right? What does it say? Verse uh, 17. Love thy friend and be faithful unto him. But if thou be raised his secrets, follow no more after him. The Lord said, if you tell that person secrets, you might as well not even chase that person down. That's a wrap, man. Right? You love your friend. Be faithful to it. But once you hey, discover those secrets, man, it's a wrap for you, man. Verse 18. For as a man have destroyed his enemy, so has thou lost the love of thy neighbor. Damn. So this way you destroy your enemy, you kind of beat down and prevail against your enemy, man. That's how bad you lost your friend. It's over with, man. It ain't, he ain't coming back to you. As one that letteth a bird go out of his hand, so has thou, thou let thy neighbor go and shall not get him again. And when birds come out of your hand, they're not coming back to you. 
right? They're not, you're not calling that bird back, that raven, and he coming back to you. He's gone. He across the damn country. He migrated, that, that bird migrated to the south. So has you lost your friend, right? And it says, follow after him no more. Shlaki, yeah, follow after him no more for he it is too far off. He has a role, he is as a role escaped out of the snare. As for a wound, it may be bound up. And after reveling, there may be reconciling, right? So a wound can be bound up, right? A, 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 a deep patch or a deep, you know, um, dark, you know, whatever in your friend, your brother, whatever y'all go through, y'all fight, right? That may be a wound, right? And get, and what does it say? And after reviling, right? Reviling, man, he may get on your nerves. You may have said something he ain't like, or she, she may have said something about you he ain't like. But hey, guess what? It says there may be a reconcilement, right? You can come back, you know, you can kind of talk to each other about it over some dinner or whatever, some yon yon, y'all shake hands, you know, y'all get y'all get each other to dap me say, man, I always I love you, bro. He's like, I love you too, bro. Right? But hold on though, what? But he that be rare of secrets is without hope. And hey, you let them you let his personal life out to somebody else, man, and he didn't give you permission to, guess what? You without hope. He'll cut you off quick, man. Right? Hey, it was, it's, it's gonna be awkward now. Y'all gonna have a business relationship. There's no emotions involved. He gonna shake your hand, you shake his hand. You gonna try to crack a joke with him. He ain't having it, man. He out of there. You know? And that's how you lose your faithful friend is not being there for that person and losing that person's trust at the end of the day, man. Right? But the Lord said you gotta be faithful to your friends, man. Let's go to John chapter 15. It's the book of John, chapter 15, and verse 13. Let's start verse 12. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. So the Lord said, love one another as I love you. Talking about the people, your, the people of your own nation. Verse um, 12, verse 13. Greater love have no man than this. That a man laid down his life for his friend. So ultimately, if you have that faithful friend, he's gonna be a strong defense. And you should be that same strong defense. And if it came down to it, you should be able to die for your friends. If you really love that person, you should die for that person, man. You know, you would die for that that loved one, right? You would die for that uh, or that brother. Hey, die for that sister. Die for those that, hey, that would die for you, man. That would put your life on the line for them. Right? If you're in a camp or organization, them your brothers, man. Those are your friends, right? Who is my mother? Who is my brother? The Lord said, man, those are your friends. You should be able to die for those people in battle, man. You know, you should be able to go to war for your friend. And, 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 and what happens to war? Death happens, man. So if you're able to go to war for your friend, you're able to die for your friend. And that's what the Lord did. You, verse 14, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. And the Lord said, guess what, man? Hold on, verse 15. Hen henceforth, I call you not servants for the servant, nor not what his Lord doeth. But I've called you friends for all things have I heard of my father. I've made known unto you and the Lord called us friends. And guess what the Lord did at the end of his life. All right. That's why you on the earth right now, because the Lord died for you to be here now. And he said, you are his friend. So how much more if you call that brother your friend? Hey, if you call me your friend and I call you my friend in my mind, you're going to die for me, man. Right. You, you not. There's no half stepping with me and, and you shouldn't. And I wouldn't treat that the same with the other person. Man. I ain't going to half step with you either, man. You know, let's go to 1 Samuel 20 and 17. Right, this is 1 Samuel chapter 20 and verse 17. And Jonathan caused David to swear again because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. John, hey, Jonathan loved David, man. He get put off the clothes off his back, all right? He loved him like he loved his own soul, man. How much do you love your friend? Do you love him like he your own soul, all right? That's how much Jonathan loved David, man. They made a, a pact together, right? Let's go to the book. Let me hold that. Let me go to the book of 1 Samuel 18. It's 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 3. Then Jonathan, Jonathan and David made his covenant because he loved him as he loved his own soul. Right? Hey, he made a covenant with him just because he loved him that much. Verse 4. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him 
and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword, into his bow, into his girdle. He gave him his sword. He gave him his girdle. He gave him his all his defense, man. Even to close off his own back, he gave to David, man. Right? You got to understand what type of love that is. Are you going to do that for your brother? If your brother was out there cold, naked right now, and you got some extra pair of clothes or to close off your back, you can give it to him. Right? What type of love you have for your brothers, man? And that's the example that, hey, Jonathan uh, showed for us how he treated David, man. You know? And that's what we want at the end of the day. All right, let's get one. Get one more. All right, let's get one more. All right, let's go to Sirach nineteen and ten. Actually, let's get the law. Let me get Leviticus. All right, let me end on this. Sirach nineteen and ten. This Leviticus nineteen and verse seventeen. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt any anywise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge of thy children, thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord, man. And that's what Jonathan did. He loved your neighbor. He loved his neighbor as he loved himself. And that's the beginning of a friendship, man. And we should all be practicing that in these last days because we all we got. But I'd like to give up. Uh, it was a quick cold cut going into fake, how to identify fake friends, right? And how to treat faithful friends, man. And how to lose faithful friends if you're not being circumspect. So all praise to you. How about Shimi? I'd like to be the mighty strong. Shalom. Man.